Israel normalized ties with the UAE, Sudan and Bahrain this year. Israeli media is saying that there was a shadowy agreement between Netanyahu and the United Arab Emirates prior to the normalization deal. It says that this might be similar to Netanyahu's submarine scandal with Germany. There is no base to say that there will negotiations on this issue. There was no condition on behalf of the UAE to sell them F-35s as part of the peace deal. Only after the deal was signed, the Americans told us we should consider this matter. In that case, close aides and friends of his were involved in bribery for the purchase of submarines and missile-equipped boats. In this case, however, it was convincing Netanyahu's ally in the White House, U.S. President Donald Trump, to sell the Emirates F-35 warplanes. Not everyone's happy about the deal. Many in Israel believe that selling F-35 warplanes to the UAE gives it a military edge that only Israel enjoys. And the Arab Israelis believe the so-called Abraham Accords also known as the normalization deal or apartheid in nature. It seems that at home in Israel, Netanyahu isn't being totally honest about his normalization deals with Arab countries. Israeli media shine light on the fact that Netanyahu has given his agreement to U.S. the sale of F-35 fighter jets to the UAE as a big incentive for the country to sign a peace deal with Israel. At first, these claims were dismissed and labeled by Netanyahu and his supporters as fake news. But he recently admitted that the U.S. is planning to sell the advanced aircrafts to Abu Dhabi and Israel will not object. Netanyahu, in his defense, claimed the arms deal between the U.S. and the UAE was made after the normalization agreement had been signed. Israeli military minister Benny Gantz, however, implied that Netanyahu lied to the Israeli military and the negotiations over the normalization deal, which included the sale of the jets, had been conducted behind the backs of Israel's defense establishment. Opposition lawmaker and former military minister Moshe Yalon said the same thing happened during the purchase of submarines from Germany, with Netanyahu completely ignoring the defense ministry's opinion on the matter. It should be noted that this submarine affair with Germany is a big deal in Israel. The high-profile Case 3000 investigation has accused several close associates of Netanyahu, but not the premier himself, on suspicion that they received illicit funds as part of a massive graft scheme in the shekel purchase of naval vessels and submarines from German shipbuilder ThyssenKrupp. Some have called it the largest suspected graft scandal in Israel's history. Israeli prosecutors are reportedly considering opening yet another criminal graft investigation against Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, this time in the so-called submarine affair, citing dramatic new information. Uh, I think the, uh, the price of Israel uh, wasn't, uh, uh, how to say that, there, if, if you think about what they did in the agreement, it's to make a solidarity between uh, these three countries and uh, and even Sudan were inside this uh, this solidarity uh, with America and all against Iran. Uh, this is the main the main uh, the main uh, issue in the in these agreements. But other other uh, other uh, thing that uh, it was declared declared for the people in Israel, for example, or maybe the people in these countries uh, uh, in these countries that uh, it is uh, agreement uh, for uh, business or uh, for other things. I think uh, uh, that Netanyahu uh, need the business. Maybe he needs the business or uh, the Israel. Between these countries and Israel, but moreover, they want to make a prize for Trump, who is now out, and uh, uh, Netanyahu to to say that we did something in this uh, in this uh, in this uh, time, and to give legitimation for uh, the F-25 war uh, airplanes 
or how you say it, um, it's about uh, selling these uh, airplanes for these countries. Because uh, Netanyahu has trouble with his people about uh, the similar deal with the Germany about uh, about, you know, the um, uh, submarines and missile equipment boats, which was uh, a secret uh, until they discover it. And, uh, and, uh, and he couldn't ma make this deal uh, for, uh, for Egypt and uh, Germany and agree with this deal. So now he, he has the legitimation uh, about uh, about these deals uh, also uh, between Emirates and the uh, uh, USA. On social media, the conversation was tense. Heisenberg says maybe Netanyahu can sell the invisible planes with invisible money. Pierre says it was never a peace plan. Thompson says he will support the sale to give all parties the ability to defend its sovereignty or Israel can return the advanced weapon systems the U.S. gave Israel. אני את האמת לא תומך בנורמליזציה בגלל שאני לא חושב שזה תורם לפתרון הסופי לסכסוך של מדינת ישראל עם המדינות שסביבה ובמיוחד עם הצד הפלסטיני זה לא נותן פתרון סופי לסכסוך אז זה לא נחשב לדבר שתורם לשקט באזור. תלוי. מדינות שנעשה איתן יחסים מסודרים והסכמים תקינים ברי קיימא, אז יכולים לקבל תמריצים, אבל תמריצים מותנים באופן, ה... איך אני אקרא לזה, ההתנהגות שלהם. זאת אומרת, מדינות שתומכות ומדינות שה... שה-DNA שלהם הוא uh, תוקפני ופניהם לא לשלום, אז איתם גם לא עושים יחסים, uh, יחסי נורמליזציה, אבל בטח ובטח לא תמריצים. אם ניתן להגיע איתם ליחסים נורמטיביים, אז uh, אפשר לעשות את הדברים בשלבים. זאת אומרת, לא יכול להיות מצב uh, שכתוצאה מיחסי uh, נורמליזציה, נסכן את המדינה שלנו. תשמעי, עניין השלום היום, לדאבוני הרב, לצערי הרב, נהיה עניין של סכר ומכר. הכוונה, אם אני רוצה לכונן שלום עם מדינה אחרת, המדינה האחרת חייבת לתת לי משהו. ולפי דעתי, כן, צריך. למשל, אביא לך דוגמה, למשל סודאן. היום סודאן היא חותרת לקרות הסכם שלום עם ישראל. סודאן... אם את חוזרת להיסטוריה של סודאן, כל סודאן, מי ששלט בסודאן הם רודנים עד היום הזה, והיא הייתה ביצה של טרור. והיום סודאן, בגלל המצב האקונומי שלה, הכלכלי הקשה שלה, היא רוצה לצאת מהביצה הזאת, להתבטח כמו שאר המדינות. איך היא עושה דבר כזה? היא יכולה להתקרבת לארצות הברית. ואיך היא יכולה להתקרב לארצות הברית? אז המדרך, יקרה שהקפיצה שלה היא ישראל, לכן היא רוצה לקרוא את הסכם שלום עם ישראל. that will uh, make a real democracy and not uh, what's happening right now that he kills all the demo uh, democratic uh, institutes and uh, he makes what he wants like a king 
and uh, that's what we are against. I think what has happened is that Israel normalized relations with Bahrain and the UAE and Sudan and now also Morocco because it's part of the United States reactionary alliance. The U.S. wants to have a, an alliance of states that are with it militarily, primarily, primarily militarily and then also economically. So you have countries like the United States, Israel, Bahrain, the UAE, countries like Brazil, countries like Hungary, some of the European countries, get together in what I think of as a very reactionary alliance of the most uh, backward states when it comes to uh, political morality. Netanyahu may have objected at first to the sale of, of F-35s to the UAE, but he knows and the United States knows that Israel has nuclear weapons. First of all, this is basically, the, the, this alliance is good for all of them for military sales. It's a sales alliance. It's gonna boost military sales monumentally. Secondly, these states cannot possibly attack Israel or become militarily superior to Israel because they don't have nuclear weapons. Per usual, we will sit down with the two artists to discuss their views and personal experiences. We have also prepared a couple of recommendations for you that I hope you will find useful. Netanyahu is also under fire for striking a normalization deal with Sudan, at the behest of the U.S. taking Sudan off its list of terrorism sponsors. Sudan has been under sanctions, and by removing it from the list, Sudan would be relieved of its financial burdens and can trade freely with the U.S. and other countries. Sudan believes that it is the biggest winner of the deal. According to Sudan, Khartoum would have had to wait a year to be delisted as state sponsor of terrorism, says General Abdel Fattah Bor Han, head of the ruling sovereign council. For Netanyahu's right-wing supporters, the normalization with Arab countries can cost them greatly. First of all, Netanyahu has promised that he will not for the time being annex the occupied West Bank, which was a major campaign promise. He had wanted to annex it and promised to do so for years, despite public outcry from the international community. From the Israeli rights perspective, the main purpose of these agreements is to solidify its power and to further weaken the Palestinian struggle against occupation and apartheid. The Israeli Arabs will reflect on this because they are treated as second-class citizens. In fact, the so-called nation-state law institutionalized racism and apartheid against Israeli Arabs. They believe that the Abraham Accords are essentially an alliance of Israel with its apartheid against Palestinians, Bahrain and its Saudi-backed Sunni oppression of the Shia majority and the UAE. Emirati citizens live with 8 million foreigners with no rights. As I said, it is apartheid countries. Uh, they, they, uh, they are not democratic. They have people there as, as a second uh, level uh, citizens or uh, or something like this. So uh, when they make these deals without uh, talking about uh, Palestinians' uh, problems, uh, Palestinians, uh, Palestinian-Israeli uh, conflict, uh, not talking about a solution also for uh, the, uh, these uh, agreements and also Israel 
uh, has the Arab Palestinian and after the law the uh, the uh, nation uh, country law uh, which make the Arab uh, Palestinian Israeli uh, citizens uh, in a second level it's you know like making legitimation for this apartheid regime it's uh, putting the uh, uh, it's saying for the whole world okay uh, here we have in uh, bahrain in uh, in emirat in saudi we have uh, also like uh, these uh, people who we can uh, we can treat israeli uh, palestinian uh, citizens the same Uh, they can't sign it they can't uh, they can't uh, support it because it's they it, it didn't speak about uh, a solution for the palestinian it didn't speak about uh, the um, uh, nation country uh, law which make the palestinian uh, people uh, in israel uh, as uh, as other uh, citizens uh, jewish citizens so they can't uh, they, they did didn't sign it, they don't agree with it, about, about these uh, agreements under the law. But now when it's uh, under the table and now when it is uh, uh, on the table uh, and need the, the, uh, the support of the uh, lawmakers, there is uh, many differences between these uh, agreements. Uh, in the uh, deal of the cent uh, century, uh, there was uh, there were uh, talks about uh, solution of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Uh, was this solution fair for the Palestinian or not? But the Palestinian conflict was in the middle of this uh, agreement. The agreement between. Uh, Emirates, uh, Saudi, Bahrain, uh, and Israel and Sudan, there was nothing about Palestinians. Uh, also, uh, what is similar between them, and uh, if there is something secret or a uh, shadow uh, about uh, Palestinian, in both agreements, Palestinians are not part of, of these agreements. They don't share they don't uh, support, they uh, don't uh, uh, have any idea about what is uh, going between them. And, and then they, they want the Palestinian to accept it. On social media, the conversation was tense. Ruana says normalization with Israel is to recognize the right of the thief who stole your brother's house, expelled him and his family to the street, and you open your house to rob you too and expel you with your family later. Motherland says shame on these countries that normalize with Israel. CC Cannon says I think you better start backing as far away as possible from the corrupt Trump administration. הרי טראמפ הוא אם נתניהו, כמובן, הם אלה שהובילו את המהלך שנעשה מעל לשולחן, כמו שאמרתי קודם, אבל אנחנו לא שוכחים שההסכמים האלו והמשא ומתן לפני זה, המשא ומתן הסודי, היה גם לפני טראמפ וגם לפני נתניהו. אז uh, טראמפ ונתניהו, אני חושב שהם היו רק uh, הוותרינה של ההסכמים האלה. אני חושבת שנתניהו לא עושה שום דבר טוב. אז uh, <laughs> אני לא יכולה לשפוט את המעשים שלו, כי אני לא באמת... ולכן אני לא יודעת מה הוא עשה ומה הוא לא עשה, ואם זה טוב או לא טוב. לפי דעתי כן. זה תלוי במדינות ולא תלוי באנשים ולא תלוי בשליטים. כן, צריך להיות מותנית. אם אני אעשה נורמליזציה, צריך קודם כל לא לפגוע בי כמדינה, בריבונות שלי. למשל, היום אנחנו רואים שהסכם השלום בין האמירויות לבין ישראל, 
אנחנו שומעים על סכר ובני אדם, על זנות, על סמים, על מחתרות. צריך שכל מדינה, לפני שהיא קוראת את הסכם שלום, צריך קודם כל לבדוק את העניין הזה מכל הבחינות, מכל האספקטים, ואחר כך לחתום על הסכם. שישמור כמובן על הריבונות שלה. I'm protesting here my first time and uh, it's, uh, I'm protesting because of the trial of the Prime Minister who, that is trying to, uh, to avoid it and we want him to, uh, to quit, to resign. If, if you just go back to 2018 and look at Israel's nation state law that was passed in it, what we see is a law that says Jews alone have the right of self-determination within Israel whose boundaries are not defined in this law and that Jews alone can settle the land as a form of almost spiritual national redemption. In addition, it makes Hebrew the official language of Israel and relegates Arabic to a second, secondary status. That means Palestinians living within Israel proper, as it's called, as well as in the Palestinian territories that are occupied, these people are not only, they're not just second-class citizens. They're third, fourth, or fifth class citizens, they do not have equal rights with the Israeli, with the Jewish Israeli public. They have no right to self-determination. They have no right to settle land owned primarily by the state of Israel, the Jewish National Fund. They have no right to make Arabic their, the primary language of their daily lives. I mean, it is the, the primary language. But it's considered secondary. Some compare the Abraham Accords with the nation-state law that was passed in 2018 by the Israeli Knesset. Many compare it to legalizing apartheid, as it legally made all Arab citizens second-class citizens. Just last July, Israeli Knesset rejected an amendment nation-state law to include a clause guaranteeing the equality of all citizens. Israelis now feel that Netanyahu lied to them and that they're giving up too much instead of what they were promised nothing for normalization with Arab countries. Israelis have always sought recognition and acceptance from the Arab world without reciprocity. Can Netanyahu admit the real price of normalization for Israel? That's one question Netanyahu's opponents in Israel are asking. Here is the news making the press in Israel. Ynet News, Israel's coronavirus czar, says a third Israel lockdown definitely on the agenda. Israel's new coronavirus czar, Professor Nachman Ash, said that Israel should prepare another year of dealing with the pandemic, warning that a third lockdown is definitely on the agenda. The Jerusalem Post, a young couple from Beersheba experiencing financial difficulties due to the coronavirus pandemic, allegedly turned their apartment into a warehouse for storing drugs and weapons. Israel police investigators uncovered various weapons and explosive devices in their apartment. They also found other substances, including dozens of bags suspected to contain marijuana and a digital scale that raised the suspicion of drug trafficking as well. The Times of Israel, protesters demand Supreme Court allow launch of official probe into massive graft scandal that has ensnared Netanyahu Associates. The affair, also known as Case 3000, revolves around allegations of a scheme in the multi-billion shekel state purchase of the naval vessels from German shipbuilder ThyssenKrupp. The case has already resulted in indictments against several close associates of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, as well as high-ranking military officials, but not the Premier himself. 
Globes. IBM Israel is laying off dozens of employees in its sales division. The cutbacks come just six months after the company shed dozens of employees from its development center in Tel Aviv as part of a reorganization of the company's storage products. The latest cuts are also part of a global streamlining process in which thousands of jobs are being cut worldwide.